Yeah, so uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Bastian. I'm a PhD student in information security. And in my talk, I want to discuss ethical considerations uh, in security research. So as we all know, uh, in information security, it's sometimes great fun to uh, sometimes think like the bad guys and find vulnerabilities that allow us to let the system behave in a way it wasn't intended to uh, do or extract data that wasn't extended, uh, intended to be revealed and so on. And in fact, that's why we're here in, in Hamburg these days. But there is one question that arises. Is it our duty uh, to think about ethics of our actions in information security research? And this year's Congress motto is not my department. That's from a satirical song on Werner von Braun's attitude towards um, the consequences of his work for Nazi Germany. He built the V2 rocket. And it says, once the rockets are up, who cares where they come down? That's not my department. And following this reasoning, we can discuss if it's our duty to evaluate the impact uh, of our research. And I would say, yes, of course it is. And most other researchers do likewise and provide extensive uh, sections on ethical considerations in their research, uh, on, on their research in their papers. And I think this research has changed drastically uh, in the last few years. So, while in, in earlier days, um, works on in information security looked at uh, security threats uh, in a theoretical way, uh, these things have changed in, in recent time and current researchers often validate uh, their research by implementing an attack and testing it in the wild. And of course, then ethical implications uh, in this, let's say, uh, gray area of research uh, are obvious. And while they're not as fundamental uh, to humankind as, for example, in uh, medical research or other issues in, in natural science, I still believe that there is a need to, to address these ethical questions. And there are several famous examples uh, for papers in this uh, gray area. So, for example, there's a, a paper on Tor, shining light into dark places, understanding the Tor network. Uh, what they have done, they've analyzed uh, Tor traffic and uh, analyzed what kind of users are there, what kind of traffic, and so on. And the problem, Tor's purpose is anonymization. So Tor users are intentionally seeking for additional anonymity and additional privacy. So the question is, is it okay to then analyze exactly this traffic? <coughs> and I think sometimes it's difficult to determine uh, where to draw this line that should not be crossed. So the discerning factor between the white hats and the black hats. What can you expect from this talk now? So at first I want to present some of the controversially discussed papers and their uh, ethics uh, considerations. So please note that all these papers got approvals from, from review boards at the universities and they were published at large conferences. So I certainly don't want to pick at the authors and I do not want to criticize them for their papers. They have all done uh, phenomenal research but their papers just serve as examples for controversially discussed research. In the following, I want to uh, propose four ethical principles that might help researchers uh, to estimate the ethical impact of their work and compare them to the papers presented before. And for me, the aim of the talk is to make you think about uh, research methods and its possible impact uh, to others and then maybe stimulate a discussion about research ethics in general in our community. And I don't have definite answers and I strongly believe that there's uh, still plenty of room for, for discussion and at least in Europe the whole situation is somewhat uh, unsatisfying. So unlike in the US where all the, the large universities have their, their RBs, the institutional review boards where researchers can, can check their research proposals uh, before they do their work, uh, we don't have them in Europe. And that's a problem because large conferences, mostly in the US, uh, often require exactly this IRP uh, approval for acceptance of these papers in this gray area. So it's difficult for, for European uh, universities to, to do research in exactly this area. So let's begin with a short um, presentation of these controversially discussed papers. The first one I want to discuss is Spamalytics. 
um, an empirical analysis of uh, spam marketing conversion. So the idea of this research is very easy to explain. The researchers uh, have broken into a spam sending botnet and analyzed it and then manipulated some of the messages in a way that uh, the receiver's actions such as clicking on, on, on the spam links and buying some stuff is, is trackable for the researchers. That's of course fascinating research and very interesting results, no question. But is this ethical research? And we'll now have a look at the author's uh, arguments. So they said we're just passive actors. So uh, we ensure uh, neutral actions and each user uh, is, should never be worse off due to their uh, activities. So they just observed everything, what happens on the server, manipulated some messages, and when they were manipulated, then the user wasn't, uh, was, wasn't uh, worse off because they, they removed uh, the links to the, to the spam uh, buying websites and had their own website where they uh, told the user that this is a spam message. So that sounds fair, right? Next one is uh, your botnet is my botnet, uh, analysis of a botnet takeover. So it's a fascinating story about a, a botnet that was overtaken by researchers for analysis purposes. And of course the, the authors had to, to deal with the eth ethical questions such as if it's unethical to break into a botnet and they argued like this. So they operated the, the botnet they have overtaken uh, in such a way that the harm to the, to the users or to the victims uh, will be minimized. And they collected enough information to later uh, enable a notification of uh, affected users. So they uh, wanted to, to inform uh, users afterwards. So they minimized harm, they informed uh, uh, the, the owners of infected machines afterwards, so it seems ethical. Next one is PharmaLeaks, it's quite new, it's from, from summer 2012. It analyzed uh, the underground economics of affiliate networks for pharma products on the web uh, with the help of leak data. So this leak was in form of, uh, of database dumps that were mainly uh, driven by a competition of criminal organizations. So there were uh, two different um, affiliate networks for, for pharma products and one hacked the other and released uh, a database dump uh, with all the information. And yeah, it, it was leaked to, to the public and the researchers took this data and analyzed uh, how these affiliate networks work. And yeah, the researchers had an ethics section in their, in their paper and they knew that the data was uh, gathered by illegal means and so they uh, justified their, their research with reasoning about harm. So they said um, at the time of research all the data was already in the wild so, in fact, uh, they, they couldn't uh, create any new harm because everything was, was known before. And the last paper uh, I want to present, um, is the internet for porn? Well, at least this guy thinks <laughs> to know the answer, the tracky monster. Um, this paper uh, analyzes the, the economics uh, behind traffic trading networks for uh, porn websites. And the authors even actively particip participated in this business by setting up their own website and uh, earning, uh, earned money with, uh, with their website. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they had um, a, a section about, um, about ethics. And let's see the arguments. They said clearly the, the question arises if it's ethical to, to participate in this traffic trading. And we believe that realistic experiments are the only way to uh, estimate the success rate. And then they said that we didn't withdraw any funds uh, uh, of, of the trading accounts. So they didn't take the money they, they earned from the, from the website. They were pretty successful, by the way. <laughs> So up to now we have seen uh, recent publications uh, and the author's arguments on why they think their research is ethical. And I now want to dis discuss some fundamental ethical principles and compare them to the introduced papers and their arguments uh, on, on research ethics. So uh, a seemingly uh, straightforward principle uh, is that researchers should not actively harm others. So, for example, writing your own malware and testing it in the wild is obviously a bad idea. But let's first have a look at another science uh, area with a long history of uh, research ethics, uh, medical research. 
What you can see in this slide is a, is a picture from one of the most important cases of ethics in, in medical science. It's a so-called Tuskegee uh, syphilis experiment. It started in 1932 and aimed at analyzing the spread and the possible treatments for syphilis. And in 1947, uh, penicillin was found to be a very effective treatment for syphilis. But nevertheless, this experiment continued for over uh, 25 years after it um, then was uh, shut down in the, in the early 70s. And during these 40 years of runtime, uh, patients were not informed about available treatments and no precautions were taken that patients uh, do not infect, uh, infect others. And they were also actively given uh, false information regarding the treatment. And today, today it's, it's obvious that such a study is unethical. So doctors are not only not allowed to withhold information about effective treatments, but they also have to explain patients about uh, the study design. So today, lines that should not be crossed in medical research are well defined, and possible effect, uh, impact of, of unethical research is known in detail uh, through a large number of research scandals. So medical research directly affects human lives. But what about our, file, uh, our field? What could possibly go wrong in information security research? Well, I believe that the differences to medical research are quite obvious. Our research, if performed unethically, can still have a dramatic impact on the involved people. I have an example. It's not quite academic, but still uh, it shows or it can show the, the impact of unethical studies in a very drastic way. And that's the, the Craigslist, Craigslist experiment. Um, it was a, a fake a hoax uh, ad on, on Craigslist, was posted by someone uh, under the name of a woman. It was sexually very explicit and well, more than 100 men responded, not only by their names, but they sent pictures, sent uh, their mail addresses, even corporate mail addresses, uh, phone numbers and everything. And the guy who uh, set up this ad just collected everything and put it on his blog and said, hey, people trust each other on Craigslist. And that's a very interesting result. And of course, the, the, um, the results are immense. So there were divorces, there were firings, there were lawsuits, and so, and so on. So as you can see, it can still uh, have a dramatic uh, impact on, on involved uh, people's life if we do our research in an unethical way. The second principle is do not watch bad things happening. So in real life, there's even the term non-assistant non of a person in danger. So for, existence, for, for, for instance, if you witness a car accident and with injured people, uh, then you have the legal obligation to, to give first aid. And at first glance, it seems as obvious as do not harm users actively. So to do not uh, watch bad things happening. But let's have a look at two of the previously introduced papers. So there was the spam analytics paper. Um, they were breaking into, into a spam sending botnet and uh, analyzed what, what, what's, ha what's happened there. So they said, yeah, we were just passive actors. But passive actors, in the end, means watching without helping. So the authors argued that they manipulated some of the spam messages and that they have done good things. So that no one is... Uh, uh, is worse off than uh, without their research. However, the researchers did not prevent that still millions of millions uh, of spam messages are sent over the spotnet. And they knew which computers were infected, and they simply watched and informed uh, people afterwards. So in a real life analogy, it would be like you're a researcher and want uh, to, 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 to analyze the illegal uh, activities uh, street. So you're uh, sitting in some, some back street and observing muggers uh, without calling the police. Just want to, to, to analyze uh, what, they, what they steal and so on. The other paper uh, was, the, was the other botnet paper where they uh, uh, broke into, to, into a botnet and analyzed what, what types of, of data uh, this botnet steals and so on. And they said, yeah, they, they minimized the, the damage to the users. But I think it's difficult to define uh, minimizing damage. So ultimately, it would mean that no research is possible, because 
the authors would have uh, taken actions to shut down the, the botnets once they got access to it. But uh, of course they wanted to do research, so they, they, they analyzed the botnet and, uh, and afterwards uh, users were informed. But I don't think that's uh, minimizing um, the damage. Next one is do not perform uh, illegal activities to harm illegal activities. Or in other words, um, is being unethical, uh, is, is being unethical to the unethical, unethical? <laughs> so again, have a look at the, at the botnet paper, where we're breaking into botnet and analyzing everything. Um, consider some, some, some legal botnet, for example, set it at home. So they were doing good things, searching for extraterrestrial life, and breaking into a legal botnet, like set at home, would be unethical, right? But does this feeling change if the botnet is malicious? So I think that's a tricky question. And think of a real life uh, analogy. So breaking into a thief's house to just analyze which good, uh, goods has been stolen is probably a very bad excuse for a researcher when arrested by the police. So for everyone, it's clear that this would be illegal and unethical. But for the botnet, I think it, it's difficult. It's a tricky question. Um, yeah, and uh, even no argument of, of self-defense can be made in the, in, the, in the case of the botnet. So they, they br actively uh, were broken into this botnet and analyzed it. They weren't victims of, uh, of this botnet. The other paper is, um, I want to discuss is the, is the PharmaLeaks paper, so where they, they analyzed the, the database dump that was leaked. And they say, okay, uh, it was already in the wild, and consequently we can't create any new harm because everything was, was known before. And that's a classical statement of defense. So uh, we can use illegal uh, data because uh, others have done it as well. Or in other words, uh, I was just following the rest of the group. Or Alice and Bob got caught doing the same, same thing and nothing happened to them, so it's okay uh, to also do this. The problem is, does this really make your research ethical or more ethical? So if something is wrong and uh, you know it is wrong, is everyone does it this way uh, ever a relevant defense for these actions? I don't think so. And the last principle I want to discuss uh, is uh, do not conduct uh, undercover research. Question why? Um, Problem is, for, for normal uh, undercover, um, undercover work, um, you need uh, cooperation with uh, law enforcement. So law enforcement has clear rules defining which actions in undercover work are permitted and which are not. And for some uh, investigations, you need the cooperation with the law enforcement. So for instance, if you want to become a member of a group of criminals, you often have some form of joining ritual. So where you have to commit some, some crime to prove your ability. And this can only be done by, um, by undercover worker uh, if they have the, uh, the cooperation with law enforcement that allows them to do su su such things. And in research, it's difficult. So you can't, uh, for example, if you're a researcher and want to try to, to understand the, the market mechanisms of local drug dealing, you can't just go out and simply uh, sell drugs at different prices and different quality and then uh, figure out price elasticity, for example, or ways to disturb this illegal market. Besides, of being, uh, besides the risk of being shot by some other drug dealers, of course, it would be illeg illegal to do so. And similar to, to testing illegal drug markets would be, for example, buying a botnet or buying stolen credit cards. And this might have to be uh, at least considered as unethical since uh, bad guys receive money from you with your research. And that's exactly the same uh, uh, in, in this paper where they analyzed uh, this uh, traffic trading for porn websites. So, their argument is that we, we believe that realistic experiments are only the only way to, to estimate uh, the success rates of attacks in the real world. So they said, yeah, we had to do it in that way. But this reasoning doesn't solve the actual problem of unethical uh, research. So we had to do it in this way. That's not true. So nobody forces you to, to perform some, uh, some specific uh, research experiment. You can also uh, always do some, some other research. 
with maybe uh, other results or uh, results in, in lower quality, but still you can do uh, some other research. So the introduced paper clearly is undercover work and could lead to problematic situations regarding ethics. For example, they made a lot of money with this uh, website and then there was this question, uh, if they can uh, take this money or, sh or should, uh, if they le should leave this money uh, with the bad guys that uh, you know, provide this uh, trading website. So to conclude this, um, I think most papers dealing with a large amount of user data and breaking into systems and so on include sections about uh, ethics. And at least in the US, universities have, have review boards for researchers where they can have their proposals checked before their work. Uh, well, in, in Europe, it's, uh, it's a totally different situation. Um, so I believe that uh, the community is well aware of the ethical questions within their field. However, as we've seen in this talk, I think it's very, very difficult to um, fulfill uh, even the, the most fundamental ethical uh, principles. And the reasons uh, are diverse. So, for example, there's this gap between what is possible, we all know nearly everything, and what is acceptable. And that makes it very difficult to find the right place where to draw this line that should not be crossed in, in ethical research. And another problem are the, the, the unpredictable effects of, of the analyzed systems. So remember the botnet paper? So they were breaking into the command and control uh, server. And this is a complex uh, system and in most cases, of course, undocumented. So it's difficult to, to calculate the, the impact of your actions that then later could harm uh, users even if you uh, didn't intend to do so. And even if you're a passive observer, then you always have the problem of uh, watching without helping. So that uh, you, you have the possibility to, to do something and uh, you don't do it because you want to do the research. So I believe that these questions will be continued uh, to be discussed in the future and hopefully will lead to some similar ethical standards as we have in, in natural sciences and uh, some more um, um, review uh, boards and some of these uh, constitutions in, uh, in Europe. So thank you for your attention. So if you have questions, there are two mics in the aisles, please line up here. Could it be that the classical ethics is dead? Why? Because in classical ethics, like, you know, you know categoric imperative and, and, and so on, me, it is uh, us. I am the part of the whole humanity, okay? Mm -hmm. So I should not harm the humanity. Uh, currently, we have two situations. First, the world is overcrowded already. Aren't you ashamed to get your salary? Because somebody in Africa is not getting given this. Is he us or others? I don't know. And then again, the complexity. What it means? If the systems are complex and you want to investigate them, is it at all possible to do it in an ethical way? If you want to, to, to get to know how, for example, Facebook tracing cookies work, then uh, it's, it's not you, it's another subject, another actor with his own will. And his interest is that you don't know it. He will cover it, will cooperate with something else. So basically excluding the very legal possibility for you to investigate this. So my question actually is that in our time where is a um, plurality of, of actors and everybody has its own will. Is it possible that the classical ethics is dead? Thank you. Yeah, I think it's, it's very, very difficult to, to find all the, um, all, all the impact of, of your work. And you can't uh, see all the, all the things uh, you're doing and all the, uh, all the side effects of your work. But I think it's still not, uh, uh, 
leaves you uh, with, the, with the question of uh, if, it's, if it's ethical to do so. You, you, you don't have to do the research if you are unsure about the ethical implications. Okay, we have three minutes left, so please stay focused over there. Uh, what do you think about the ethics of responsible releasing of uh, vulnerabilities? For example, we had a SCADA talk here with a guideline which is dual use uh, on uh, pen testing yeah. uh, special plants, or we had talks about anti-forensics defeating Windows forensics. It, does the harm principle help? Or what, what kind of principle could help there? Thanks. I think the rules there are, are quite clear. So for example, that you uh, give them the vendor three months of time for fixing this, and then it will be published to uh, to make pressure uh, on the on the vendor. Doesn't help with the power plant. Yeah. Okay. Two questions from the internet. Uh, all right, the first question from the internet is as follows: uh, Why trying to develop new ethical rules when you could probably use ethical rules from other science disciplines like medical research? Yeah, we have to take it. We have done this before, and not everything from, from, from medical research, research uh, fits in, in our uh, area. I think the, the first step is to, to analyze uh, what, 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 what is needed, and then we can, uh, re, of course, you reuse um, things from, from other areas. And do not harm users actively or uh, persons actively is valid in, in every other uh, research area as well, of course. Okay, and the second question, uh, thank you for your insightful talk, in which you presented a lot of lines that should not be crossed, however, I wonder why they should not be crossed. In short, which ethical framework do you use to, uh, to decide the ethical questions of your talk? The ethical, this, uh, of, could you repeat this? The ethical questions yes. of, the, the, the principles or in short, which ethical framework do you use to decide the ethical questions of your talk? <laughs> this ethical question. <laughs> I have to admit that's a tricky question. <laughs> and I would say um, these, uh, these principles I, I discussed come, come from, from other research areas, for example, the medical research. OK, all right. Hello, I will make a brief. Um you talked about uh, the research activities and ethics issues. Uh, what about the results? About, so like, about publishing results? About you, you, you research something that is definitely will, will be used for something that will uh, restrain the rights of the, of, of the human beings. I think that's the same. Same with, um, I, I discussed um, um, the, the results um, with, with the papers. So. I don't know uh, all the all the research uh, results from from these papers because I only can read the results, the, the actual paper. No, but you so. talked about ethical questions within the the, the phase. Yeah, but of, within of within the results, I can only I can only read the paper and see what what they have done, and that that's that's the thing that that makes the impact. Okay, the left. Don't you think it's a little bit short-sighted and counterproductive to be blaming thousands of researchers instead of blaming the no, people no. who are creating insecure systems in the first place? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Of course, you can. You, we, as a, we as a research community, we have to uh, show uh, the problems in, in the systems and insecure systems. But I think we can also... Um, discuss if it's ethical to, uh, to do this research and to uh, release these results? It's another question. Okay, on the right. Um, this is more like a comment. Um, somebody over here was asking which ethical framework you use um, to determine uh, the questions in your talk. Yeah. And um, I recommend for, for a follow-up talk you um, go and uh, perhaps consult the Stanford Library of Philosophy. It has, um, you know this, yeah. you're familiar with it. Okay, so there's, <laughs> there's multiple yeah. objectives. There's multiple objectives yeah. um, that ethics can follow and, and I think um, listing them and, and being explicit about which yeah. one you're following yeah. would be helpful. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, do you actually think it makes a difference whether the results of such, of such research could be used to, to, to improve the situation? Um, yeah, do you think it makes a difference to, to um, say, well, it's okay if you, if you can do it for, for doing anything better in the, in the future? It depends on how these results are published. So if you give, for example, if you find some, some vulnerabilities in the system and you give the vendor uh, time to fix this and uh, publish it afterwards, then, then I think it's okay. Then you improve the, the whole situation with the system mm -hmm. and uh, no new harm is, is made. Yeah, but if, you, if I'm coming back to your, um, your example of, the bot, of taking over a botnet, for example, um, does it make the situation better if the results from this research um, can be used to, to prevent illegal botnets or I don't know. Can they? Probably I not, I not don't so think much, so. but yeah. It was just an analysis how, how this uh, undercover economy works, but mm -hmm. it won't prevent any new botnet. Or maybe make life harder for, for a botnet owners. I don't know. Yeah, oh. I doubt it, but yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, thank you, Sebastian, and thank, thank you, you for your attention.